pulled and stuff like that. I I got you know I had the fight in November pulled um, after 15 weeks of training and you know I, I as gutted as I was initially I could sit there and and dwell and think you know that's 15 weeks wasted, um, 15 weeks for nothing, that's money spent on a fight camp that I'm not going to get back. Oh, I can focus on the positive and think well, you know you've you've had 16 weeks you, you've gone in, you've gone in fight shape. You've obviously Im- improved your your cardio, your technique, your sharpness. Um, every fight camp, you're getting a little bit better in every yeah, area, yeah. no matter what. So you know the positive of it is probably come out of the fight camp better than why I went into the fight camp, and it gives me that base layer you now to to build for next year, rather than dwell on the negative of you know I've lost this and I can't fight and oh shit, shit it only happens to me. Like if Needs I if- one way. Thanks for tuning in to watch this podcast with Jack Shaw. This podcast is sponsored by Effect Electrical for all your electrical needs. He also installs car chargers. And our other sponsor is Tech Security for all your security needs. Head over to him, check him out. He installs gates, cameras, etc. But most of all, enjoy the podcast. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe. Give the video a share. And uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty more coming. So enjoy. Experience real podcast. Yeah, yeah, sound, mate. Sound. I'll try not to move around on this chair too much. I fucking can't keep still. Oh, mate, it's a hat. Literally, everyone who's coming here just watch <laughs> them go like about. this. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's just natural moving, isn't it? Yeah, thanks for coming in, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. How are you doing anyway? Are you good? Yeah, all good. Uh, just winding down a little bit, really, for Christmas. Still yeah. training twice a day, three times now and then, but nothing um, too heavy or, or too intense, you know, just, just ticking over. Yeah. Um, bit more weights than I'd usually do, a little bit, a little bit more technique, not so much sparring, but yeah, still still in the flow of things, but um, gradually winding it down now, ready to uh, have a week or two chill out before uh, before getting back to it in the new year. Yeah, that's it, mate. I can't fault you, to be honest. That's, you've got to have a bit of a break every now and again as well, because I expect, you, well, you went through your camp, I'd imagine, didn't yeah. you, for the fight that got pulled out, so. Yeah, it's, um, it's more of like a mental rest than anything. I mean, physically, I can train twice a day, most days, and physically I'm fine, but it's like, it's the... The mental rest of the, like a fight camp is so tough mentally. Yeah. Like nowadays, I, I mean, now I'm got a fight coming up, but I, I can get out of bed on five hours sleep and, and go training no problem in the morning. But when you're in fight camp, you know, you, ma- you got to make sure you're in bed early. You got to make sure you're up at this set time. You know, you've yeah. got to get this done. We're sort of out of fight camp, got a little bit more um, flexibility, I suppose, in your training and, and in your schedule. So it's more of a mental reset than anything that I yeah. find. I, I mean, I never struggled to motivate myself to train, but. It's just nice to have a little bit of a relax and, and, and not sort of after, you know, because when you've got a fight coming up, you're constantly thinking of that fight. No matter what you're doing, it's always in the back of your mind. So to have that sort of little bit of freedom, is, is just a nice little reset for a couple of weeks. Um, but by the time January comes, I expect I'll be missing fight camp then, so I won't yeah. be back in fight camp. So it's a, it's sort of a catch-22, you know. When, when you're in fight camp, you're looking forward to the rest, and when you're out of fight camp, you can't <laughs> wait for fight camp to start. So, yeah. you know, I, it's one of them. I bet you, like, naturally, like, overanalyze everything when you're in camp as well. Do you just course, concentrate yeah. on that goal? Like, where is Yeah, it? like, I mean, now you could you could go and have a <clears throat> have a role with the boys now, and, you know, if, if you can work a little bit of stuff, you can have a little play about. If if you, you have a role where you get sort of get stuck on you a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Whereas in fight camp, you're training for, for, for a certain person and for that end objective. So... You know, if if you have a shit session, you, you you dwell on that session a little bit. Yeah. You go home, you over analysing what went wrong, what could I have done better. Whereas I suppose now you're out to out. To, now I'm out to camp a little bit. Like, not it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't ever want to, you don't want to get your ass handed you every session. But it's not the end of the world. You know, if 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 you're lacking in a certain area, you can go home and you you don't worry about it till the next session yeah. and try and work on it then. Whereas you know, you have a bad night sparring um, in, in fight camp. You're going home and in. Your world's coming down around you, you know. I'm never going to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I can't fight like that. Like, you know, that's the first thing you think, I can't do that in a fight. I'll, I'm gonna, it's, it's not going to work if I do that. But I suppose that's just, uh, that's a little bit of the fight inside. This things people don't tend to see, and that's obviously cross-boxing, MMA. It's, yeah. it's, it's the, the mental battle, obviously, as well as the physical battle. But I, I enjoy both sides of it, you know. I enjoy being in fight camp when I'm in there. And then, you know, I enjoy being out of fight camp as well. So... It's uh, it's a different kind of lifestyle, I think. Between although you're doing the same thing, training area, it's a different different mindset and a different lifestyle. You know, when you're in fight in fight camp and out of fight camp, really got to zone into it and like get yourself in that right place. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like you said, it's all it's a mental mental thing more than anything. It's it's 
everything's a lot more intense. Your mentality is a lot more different yeah. when you've got an objective that you're training towards, whereas when you're just sort of waiting for some news or, or taking a little bit of a break, you just you just back to being an hobbyist then, you're doing yeah. it because you enjoy doing it. I expect this um, last couple of months has been a bit stressful, is it? Like not knowing where the fights are pulling out. So even your last fight, there was a few opponent changes for that one, wasn't there? Yeah, it's, it's been a mad year to be honest. Like, I mean, the, I can't say the whole year has been stressful, but obviously fight-wise, it hasn't been the best year. I mean, I had the... The show in March, so London got cancelled, uh, UFC London because of the the, oh, the, the COVID. So that that was um, that was like the end of the world pretty much to me. I, you know, I was really looking forward to that one as a team. I got I always have a big following, um, and I was at the time there was no sort of you know crowdless events. It was it was just running as normal. Yeah. So I was looking forward to, to taking a big crowd up there and you know showing off a bit of the following I've I've sort of built over the years. And then that got stripped away, and I mean it at a time where. Early on, you was probably the same. All, all the stuff you're seeing on the news and on social media, I, I was starting to think, you know, perhaps we won't be fighting at all this year. You know, yeah, because, I bet. I mean, like the the American League, like the NBA, the NFL, the Premier League, the Six Nations, they all just got cut dead. And it was as if to say, look, nothing's going to happen here and, uh, until uh, until this is gone. There was no talk of like bubbles and isolation. There was none of that at the beginning. So that, that was a... Uh, a bit of a tough one because you put where, when are we going to be fighting? Yeah. Um, and then obviously, Fight Island came about, which which was perfect. You know, perfect. It sort of salvaged the year a little bit because I, I went from thinking you know I'm not going to fight to they they've started doing these isolation and these bubbles and Fight Island and people are fighting in Vegas. So I thought right, you know we can get a couple of fights yeah. in this year. And then we had about five pullouts on that show. Oh, I think no, I, I think it. the guy I fought in the end was the the fifth opponent or the fifth contract I had sent through. Uh, but thankfully, that one went ahead, obviously. And then, um, due to fighting in Vegas, and again, that would have been a, a dream come true under normal circumstances. Yeah, it would have been great anyway, but obviously with no crowd, it's a little bit different and, and stuff like that. Um, and then I had the visa issue, that the, that got resolved, and then, they, and then ultimately they, they couldn't find me a match. So oh, that one got shot down as well. But, um, you know, can't dwell on it too much. It's... Um, it's part it's, of it. It's part, moment, part and it? parcel of it. Everyone has to deal with pullouts and a little bit of adversity. So, you know, had it been a normal year, I'd probably say I'm, I'm under a bit of bad luck. But I suppose when you consider the world's upside down, there's a lot more fighters going through it as well. Yeah. So we just try and build now and, and hope that uh, there's a little bit of normality back yeah. for next year now where we don't have to uh, keep chopping and changing these opponents and COVID tests and stuff like that. Hopefully uh, f- things go back to normal a little bit. Yeah, I hope so as well, mate. Because you just want to have... It's, it's really hard when things change, isn't it? Especially when you've got a plan. Like, I can imagine, for you especially, yeah. you aim for this one day and you want everything to be perfect for then. You're training for a certain type of fighter. Well, do you, do you specifically train for a type of fighter? Or? Um, I'm 50-50, but I am a little bit, like you said, I'm a little bit OCD in the sense of, like, right, this is the date I'm fighting on. And then, obviously, they changed the date, so it took me a couple of days to get eye in my head. And yeah. then the fighter changes. And, and although I, I, I tend to, like, prepare... And try and focus on myself. You've still got to consider, um, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent, especially at the elite level. Yeah. You, you you'd be a fool to just go in there blind and not look at your opponent. So, although although I try not to sort of have a have a set game plan and it's it's this or nothing, I I still need to, you know, know who I'm fighting because I need to know yeah. what, what they're good at, what they're bad at, and what's my easiest path to victory. Um. So then you you factor in all the chop and changes with the pullouts and the positive tests. But I think if if anything has has proved been proven to me this year is that I, I'll I just I'm in that mentality of I'll fight anyone really if 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 they pull someone out and put someone else in you know in the future now it's not going to affect me because this year I've I've probably had <laughs> nine names yeah, lined yeah. up and when I've only had one fight so it, it's one of them you, you're seeing it like top to bottom as well like even in the main events and stuff people are getting pulled because of COVID people are hopping in it's kind of like. Well, they, the way Dana's looking at it, it seems to be is he wants people who are just gonna hop in when they're needed, and it and that'll... yeah, it's um like you said, no one is exempt from it. You've seen like guys rank one being pulled out, yeah. champions have been swapped. Like you look at um the card this weekend or, or next weekend, sorry, and the card just gone. The they basically switched around four fighters because because of a positive test. So it, it's all up in the air at the minute, but um you know it, it, it is a tough one for the fighters as well because. You know, not everyone sort of walks around close to their weight. You know, not everyone is prepared to just yeah. f- fight anyone at any time. So, but but like you said, Dana and the UFC, they're trying to keep the ball rolling a little bit, I think. And um, 
it is good to see I'm obviously turning these shows over fast because there's plenty of opportunities about now for us to uh, to jump in and fight yeah. any time of the year. So I think it's definitely it's definitely helped fighters getting them in the mentality of look, let's stay a little bit more ready than we usually would, um, you know, and, and let's be prepared for them pullouts because especially in in this climate at the minute, you, you know, anything could happen. Not not so much injuries, but people are not training properly because of the gyms are being yeah. closed, and then you factor in you've got to do maybe four. Covid tests before um, before a show, then then you know, is a high percentage chance that someone's going to end up testing positive. Definitely, mate. Yeah. So like, it seems to be more like prevalent in the area lately as well, doesn't it? I don't know. I hear more people getting yeah, it like def- round here anyway. Especially this time round. I mean, early, early on when we first went to lockdown, and I'm not a conspiracist by any means, but I I generally didn't didn't know or know anyone personally who would had a positive Same test. Here, yeah. Um, whereas this time now, sort of this time, you know, I I know plenty of people who've you know, tested positive. Some of them feel really ill. Some of them don't feel ill at all. So, sort of what they were saying early on, and you know, with when they were coming out and saying, "Look, you could have it, but not have any symptoms," you was like, bullshit. Re- "Really? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bullshit." But obviously, that is the case because I know friends who, who've felt terrible and had it, and I also know people who I've sort of mixed in circles with who, who said, "Look, I haven't got it. I, haven't, I don't feel ill. Mm. I haven't got a single symptom." And They've only had a test by chance of they've been in contact with someone through track and trace, and, and they've ended up being positive themselves. So there's um there's a lot lot more to it I think than meet the CI, and um, they they pr- probably were, were a little bit more right the first time round than, than what we sort of give them credit for. Yeah, it does seem that way now anyway. When you're hearing more people, then it makes you. I'm thinking about it probably more now than before. Yeah, but obviously because people have got it. Like, but at the start. I was like, fucking hell. Like, first couple of weeks, you were thinking, God, we're going to lose, like, people we know here, aren't we? Like, initially, yeah. like, your initial thing is, fuck, you're really worried about it. And people have, obviously, lost people they, they care about and stuff, so you can't take that away. But I thought it was going to be worse than it is. Yeah, comp- I, I 100% with you on that one. Like, um, you know, the way, before we even went into lockdown, the way they were talking about it in China, they, it was as if people were dropping dead on the streets. <laughs> and, you know, there was bodies piling up. And obviously then... Like I said, the first six weeks of the original lot, and I didn't know anyone who had it, and you know it didn't make sense to me. I mean, and I like I, I obviously know people now who've, who've lost parents and and grandparents, and it is it's obviously a very serious um, disease to those who are vulnerable. But I Definitely. mean, the the world can't sort of stand still for much longer on a disease that's that's only going to target people that are vulnerable. I mean, if you're fit and healthy, I know a couple of people my age and. You know, who live a fit lifestyle and an healthy lifestyle, who, who've sort of just brushed it off as as they were a cold or a flu. Yeah. But then, you know, I do also know people who, whose parents and grandparents have got it and have, have been very, very ill. So, you know, it's the same as any illness, I suppose. Yeah. You, you, eventually, we will just learn to live with it and get on with it. It's just this have, seems to have come out of nowhere, and I think people sort of, like you said d- d- didn't know how, how, how bad it was going to be. But it was yeah. they were talking oh, about as if it was the plague and as Definitely, if everyone was yeah, going to yeah. die. You know, don't leave your house. But um, oh yeah, like fucking you know, wiping as, everything. Yeah, and then. as serious as it is, you know, I don't think it's um, you know, I don't think it's it's one of them that's going to wipe out half of the world's population. Yeah. And it's really hard to like voice your opinion of I think we should open up and do this and whatever because you kind of not you can't stand there with any moral high ground saying that no. can you? It's really hard to like put yourself because like my. I like to think we should open up, and if you're vulnerable, there should be like schemes in place for them people because we do need to keep rolling, don't we? Like, yeah, of course. I, like, um, I agree, I mean, especially with the gyms and, and public places and stuff like that. It should be a case now of I feel like we know enough about it. We know the type of people it's targeting. Um, so sort of let people, you know, live at their own risk. You know, someone like myself who's who's fit and healthy and, and young, I don't. I'm not any worry of, of leaving the house and catching it. If I catch it, you know, I, I'm I'm quite comfortable that within a couple of days, like you would the flu or cold, you, you'd pass it off. But on the flip side, I wouldn't want my grandmother go going to Tesco's and, yeah. and going and, and mixing in with big groups of people because, you know, she's 80, 80 years of age. My great grandmother's ninety. If one of them catch it, it could be you know it, it could be very very serious. Whereas myself, I I I don't think it's a, it's going to be a massive issue to me if if I did catch it. So I think people should. Be given the option, you know, train or, or use the gym at your own risk or, you know, even simple things. You want to go to the cinema, do it at your own risk. You've Personal got, preference. Yeah, sign, it? sign your disclaimer and if you're happy to crack on, then crack on. If you're not, you know, no one's going to knock you for that. Stay, stay in the house, isolate and, 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 and do what you feel like you've got to do. But, um, you know, like we said, we, we can't stand still forever. Uh, eventually, eventually, we've got to, we've got to get the ball rolling again. I said, you, you can stay as safe as you want to personally. If you want to stay safe, you can stay at home, can't you? Of course you can. And that's fine. Yeah. Like, I'm happy. I respect anyone's wishes. Like, you come here today and whatever. If you 
if you want to sit further apart or you want to sit, look, whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's up to you. And That's it. You, I mean, you're spot on. It's, you know, without getting, like, too political, it, it's, like, the amount of scaremongering and stuff like that we've had between the news and Facebook and Instagram. I mean, even now, like, if I if I see a post now on Instagram and there's something about COVID, and I get, like, this warning sign come up, yeah, and it's, like, yeah, you can click same, this yeah. link, and it gives you all, all these facts about COVID, and it's, like... You know, we we know what's well. Let, like you said, it's sort of let's run run our own risks. You know, if you want to isolate, then then great. You know, no yeah. one's gonna, you know, I'm never gonna say to anyone, no, you know, you need to man up, isolate, and then worry about this virus. <laughs> if you want to do that and you feel like that's the safest option for you, then you you're more than welcome to to, to crack yeah, on. Yeah. But you know, I, I don't feel that risk to it. But like I said, I, I feel like my nan or my great nan and you know people's grandparents probably are at risk. So. You know, li- li- live as, like you say, as personal preference, it is, yeah. isn't it? They, they don't put, like, a restrictor on your car, do they? They don't say, right, you need to do 60 miles an hour. Like, they do say you need to, but... Yeah. It's <laughs> the same, you know, like you say, you, you don't say to people, you, you can only, like, you know, if someone who's less fit than what I am, they don't say to them, oh, 60 minutes a day, that's your threshold. You shouldn't, you can't do no more than that. You know, you do they do it at their own risk? They want to do more, they do more. If they want to do less, they do less. Like you say, you, you don't say to people, you've got to drive 40 miles an hour every way. You know, you... Sort of drive at the speed at your own. Yeah, people are meant to drive at a certain yeah, speed limit, yeah. but if you break the speed limit, you do it at your own at, at your own preference. Yeah. You know, no one's forcing you to do it. So I think, like you said, that's the route we need to go down. And they do seem to be loosening the restrictions yeah, a little bit so, now. Yeah. Um, but I support. Well, I say that in Wales, we've just been pretty much back on lockdown, didn't we, for two weeks? But um, you know, it, it is a it's a lot looking a lot better than what I did sort of in March time. In March time, it, it was. We were proper locked down when we yeah. were meant to leave the house apart from an hour a day. Whereas at least now it's just a matter of we can't sort of gather in public, I think, or something yeah. like that. I think like hopefully 2021 things will turn around. I think there's been loads of positives to people though. Like for me personally, it was time to reflect and realise like where I was going wrong in life and stuff. Because you just spend all your time like working, trying to earn money or like, and you don't concentrate on yourself. Like, so I think for some people, I know loads of people who've actually... Like some people have gone one way or the other, and some people yeah. can't act being in their own head, and other people have. Yeah, it's, it's really um, helped. It's like everyone, you know, everyone lives a busy lifestyle. You know, most people are working like nine to five, five, six days a week, and sort of for a period of time, they've gone from that to, to doing nothing. So they've gone, like, you know, people have had more time to spend with their kids, maybe not spend with their distant family, but their in house family. Yeah. Um, more time for themselves as well. The amount of people I know now that have started. You know, running and cycling and training and yeah, definitely eating a little bit healthier because they've had that time to themselves now. Which if if this didn't happen, they they you know I I know people now who are running half marathons who before the lockdown never put a pair of running trainers on in their life. So it's class, it? It, it does give people time to reflect and and sort of address their lifestyle and 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 stuff like that. You know, so there's not it hasn't been completely negative. You know, in an ideal world, you never never want to have to go through all what we've been through this no. year again. But at the same time, like you said, there's been positives to it as well. Yeah, you got to, got to look at it that way as well. Otherwise, you just get brought down, don't you? Like, I, every post I see, like, to do a code, I just ignore it now. I'm yeah. just like, I don't want to know about it. It's not actually affecting me directly, like. So That's it. It's it's just it's, roll on, isn't it? you got to, you know, every uh, mindset is everything. If you if you don't want to, if you don't want to be staying positive, if you want to focus on the negatives constantly, then you turn into... A negative person, you find yourself in more negative situations. Definitely. But if you if you sort of approach life with a positive mindset and a positive outlook, then you know think things will naturally go a lot better for you. Is you know, like you say, you can look at things one or two ways. You can either focus on the negatives or yeah. think you know maybe think well you know I'm gonna you know focus on positive, but you can think well that didn't go great, but positive of that is this this and this. So yeah, you, like you said, it, it it puts things into perspective for people. I think this year, you, you can sit there and dwell on it, like can't you? And that's just going to make it worse. And I don't know about you, but like, since I've, I've tried to like switch my mind to just think like, right. Yeah. Like you said, that's not good, but where am I going to go from here? Like, am I going to let it affect the rest of my life? Am I going to do it? No, let's fucking move on and start afresh. Well, exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, j- just speaking like from personal things this year, like having fights pulled and stuff like that. I, I got, you know, I had the fight in November pulled, um, after 15 weeks of training and, you know, I, as gutted as I was initially, I could sit there and, and dwell and think, you know, that's 15 weeks wasted, um, 15 weeks for nothing, that's money spent on a fight camp that I'm not going to get back. Or I can focus on the positive and think, well, you know, you've you've had 16 weeks, you, you've, gone in, you've gone in fight shape, you've obviously imp- improved your, your cardio, your technique, your sharpness. Um, 
every fight camp you're getting a little bit better in every yeah. area no matter what so you know the positive of it is probably come out of the fight camp better than why I went into the fight camp and it gives me that base layer now to, to build for next year rather than dwell on the negative of you know I've lost this and I can't fight and oh shit, shit it only happens to me like if it I if, one way, doesn't if it? I fought like that then then you know I'm, I'm not gonna have a, have a very good time for, yeah. for a good couple of weeks whereas you know I'll show off for half hour and then start to think right well you know let's focus on this now it, it's done it, you know I my my old man is a big um a big believer in sort of you know when things when things are done they're done you know like it is sort of outlook. I said, well, you can't do nothing to change it. Now it's done. So yeah, yeah. why is why is complaining or worrying or whinging about it's going to achieve nothing? Once it's done, it's done. So you just got to suck it up, get on with it, and like you said, look at the positives and um and and reflect on them rather rather than having a yeah, negative yeah. attitude on it all the time. Yeah, I think that's that's the way forward, and it? it's the only way you. Also, like when you're doing that, I feel like you shut off, your eyes are closed, and you're not really looking out. Whereas when you like take it in and you go, right, that's happened. <laughs> Breathe, relax, yeah. like let's go from you. You open up and everything just starts to look okay again and like get out that hole in it. There's positives in every situation in life. Um look, it's again it's 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 saying the same thing, I know, but if you if you've got a negative outlook and a negative attitude, the negative things will, will yeah. come your way. And I'm a big believer in stuff like that and karma and if you approach things you know, with a positive mindset, then nine times out of ten it's gonna go a good way for you yeah. or if it doesn't go a good way it'll lead to something that does you know everything happens for a reason and why, why dwell on the negatives when there's positives to, to be looking at you get back what you put out don't you and of course you do do you believe in like manifestation and everything I yeah think? I mean I, I, I'm i sort of I'm not a free spirit by any means but like you said it's like if I've, I've over the years I've just noticed the, the more effort and the more sort of mental positivity you put into things the more they the more they tend to plan out as, as you'd expect in your head like you go going back to like my days uh fighting on cage warriors it was always for me it was like people were like oh you'll be you'll be in the ufc you're gonna fight for the belt and i was just always like i'm not interested in that in a minute it's just like i'm looking forward to this next fight and, and i'm and i'm just focusing and manifest how i'm gonna win that yeah and what's gonna happen next will happen next and and with that mindset that you know it was like, right, do you wanna I'm gonna wanna I, I wanna go and fight abroad, I end up fighting abroad. That led to a big fight. Then I had that big fight. That led to a title fight or, or to fighting in the ice arena main event. That led to a title fight. Then that led to a, a defense that ended up blowing my profile up because I had all these big media opportunities because yeah. I was a champion, which then obviously led to me going to the UFC. And it wasn't like I was sat there manifesting at, at one and oh, I'm gonna right, by twenty nineteen I'm gonna be in the UFC, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that was always the plan, but I was just always focus on what's in front of you, you know, what not what's on what's on three, four years down the line. Yeah. Focus on what's in front of you and enjoy the experience and be present in the moment and, and, and enjoy it for what it is because you see so many fighters, um, you know, they retire and you can tell they have they've they haven't sort of lived their career in the present. They've just always been focusing on what's next and focusing on what's gonna happen in three, four years' time. Before you know it, their career's over and that's why you see these guys coming back when they shouldn't be coming back because they miss that feeling. Whereas I think I'm always so present in, in everything I do is, is when I do decide to knock it on the head, I'll look back and think, well, you know, I enjoyed every minute of that and, and I took yeah. every minute of it in. And, and that's that's something that I think a lot more fighters, and I'm not trying to be like, uh, the, the, I'm not obviously the first person to say this, I'm not trying to be that guy, but there's a lot more fighters that, that should be doing that and enjoy it for what it is and, and enjoy the little things a little bit more. You know, there's Definitely. so many focus on... I want to have this many million in the bank, and I want to. I'm gonna win the UFC belt, and it's great to have those visions. But I mean, realistically, at one and all, two and all, you can't really predict. You know how much money you're gonna make, wherever you're gonna be the UFC champion. Yeah. Just enjoy the enjoy and focus on winning the next fight. And the more fights you win, then the more likely that end goal will 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 come. But obviously, you don't want to just sort of enjoy the beginning and enjoy the end. You need to enjoy the middle bit as well, and that's something I've always tried to do. I, I totally agree with you. That's life in general, isn't it? Of course it is. You yeah. can't you yeah. can't put your happiness on I'll be happy when because otherwise like if you never get there you'll never be happy that way because yeah. you know look 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 at these people with, with all these millions in the bank and you know like do you think they really sat there and thought I'll be happy when I go under a million in the bank? So what happens when they get under a million in the bank? You think they're going to have eternal happiness they're going to think yeah. yes I've done it. And, and I mean I've been here it was like you know I was thinking you know, when I, when I win the Cage Warriors belt now, that'll that that'll, that'll sort of mean the world to me. And yeah, it did. It did. It did for a week or two, and then 
before you know, then I was thinking, right, when am I going to defend this belt? And I'd love to defend this. I'd love to defend this belt. Then you yeah. defend the belt. And like, yes, I've defended the belt. I was thinking, right, I'd love to go to the UFC you now and fight there. And then the UFC have signed me, and it's like, well, that was great for two weeks. Now I'm thinking, right, let's get this debut sorted now. <laughs> yeah, have yeah, this. So it's always, you know, you got to enjoy the next step. It's it's not like you're ever going to reach a stage in your life. I don't think where you where something just. A flip switches and you, and you think right that's it I'm done I'm happy yeah this is peak happy no yeah. it's, it's never go like life yeah. doesn't go like that there's always there's always something after every goal you got there will be a goal after it you'll never reach your end goal e- even people like you know win a world title yeah they win the world title and um you know look at Tyson Fury he's the best example yeah you know, I've, I've I've read his book and and listened to interviews and like you said his ultimate goal was win the world titles become the world heavyweight champion he, he won the world heavyweight title and he said it was the the lowest you've ever felt. It was as if, like, well, what, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think it was because he probably set that goal of the, this winning the world title was the be all and end all. And once I do that, I've achieved my dream. Life's and, over, and that's it. But you know, like you said, he he, he felt worse winning the world after winning the world title than he did in in the run up to winning the world title. And, and you look at him now; he's not fighting for belts. He's not fighting for money. You can see he, he's back in the game because he he's fell back in love yeah. with what he does, and he's enjoying every step of the ride and. That's what sort of it. If that doesn't prove to you that there's, there's no end goal, you know, or no end goal is going to make you your life complete and ultimately happy, then you know it just goes to show. And you know, my my aspirations now are a lot different to what they were when I was fifteen years of age, and, and when Definitely. I'm thirty five, my aspirations are probably going to be a lot different to what they are now at twenty five. So, like you said, life is constantly moving. We're constantly evolving as people. Physically and mentally, so you know wh- why set the cap on it. You can always strive to be better and always strive for something else. As no matter how big the goal is, it'll always be something after it that you can Definitely. think. Even if it's a step down, like you know, you could win win the UFC world title and retire. There may be a goal after that. Some I don't know. People, you know, you see these athletes. Oh, I'm going to run an half marathon or do a triathlon. Is that as big and as publicized as winning a world title? No, probably not. But. Does it make them feel just as good doing it? Of course it does. Feelings a feeling, isn't it? Happiness is a, is is a feeling. It's not uh you know it's not something that's that's in the dictionary or something that's written down that that every single person is going for the same thing. It's it's a feeling and it'll always come and go. You know they'll you'll you'll always reach where you want to be, but then you'll think right well let's go a little bit further. Yeah, you may yeah. get knocked back, but you'll always push back to that same stage. Is wiper a cap on it is what I always think. You know there's too many people I think try and focus on on one thing and that's the be all and end all and then when they realise that one thing isn't the be all and end all it's a, it's a, it's a tough rut for them to get out of then definitely mate you see it all over like you said with Tyson Fury like loads of rich and famous people once they get to like the top they fall apart don't they because they, they're like fucking hell this isn't what it was all made up to be and I'm sure like the pressure then as well and it to stay there well like Conor McGregor's another good yeah, one like, definitely. he always spoke about he wanted under a million in the bank and he wanted to be the, the double weight champion and, and he achieved that you know, in in minuscule time, it was unbelievable what he done. Now you look at him five years down the line, he's probably made more money from his businesses than he's ever made from fighting, yeah. and he's made a lot of money from fighting. And what's he doing now? He's back on the title run, want, wants to win that belt again. So it's not like because he won the belt, that was it, and he sort of thought, right, I'm done, I, I, yeah. I, I've done it, I'm happy. He went away, you know, d- did what he did here and there, and now he's back sort of on a similar path, striving for something else now. So... It just, if it just goes to show, you know, you you're never gonna be like you're never gonna do one thing and that's gonna make you happy for life. No, you're definitely. Always, you, you should always set yourself, you know, little goals in life, whether it's winning a world title or sort of getting out of bed and, and walking the dog around the block. There's always little things you can check off the list. To some people, it's it's giving some people the same feeling, isn't it? Of course, you know it, what I mean. Yeah. Like it's, it's it's what's relevant to you and what you expect of yourself, isn't it? Well, like there's no one who can. You know, if you have never fought in a, in a in a ring or a cage, you know you're never gonna know what that feeling is like, and and you know it is an it's a unique feeling. But the happiness and and joy and the thrill I get from that, some people get get that from, you know, it it and their targets in work and 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 earning a bonus or sort of getting a promotion or or, or doing a five k run. Yeah. Someone who's never done a run before, they go out and finally at that time, oh, yes, I've done a five k run. You know, they get the same feel of happiness. But you know, even something as simple as that, what happens the like say someone has never done a run before in their life, they hit their target of five k. What happens then? Are they gonna be up? No, they start thinking. Do you reckon I can do a ten k run? Oh mate, yeah. And yeah. you do the tech. Do you reckon I can do an half marathon? Do you reckon I can do a full marathon? Do you reckon I can do a triathlon? So people are always gonna push on past past their targets. It's just a matter of, you know, dom. I I just believe in not making anything the, the be all and end all. Just 
you know, there's same with fighting. There's a lot, lot more to my life than 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 fighting in the UFC and 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 fighting for a living. There's a lot more things in life that make me as happy as, as winning yeah. an MMA fight and and you know entertaining a crowd does. So that that's that's just how I look at things. You know, there, there's plenty there's plenty of targets and goals and things that make us happy in life. So why sort of restrict it down to yeah, one or two I things? Agree. I think it's great, mate, because you seem grounded as well, which is good, because a lot of people in your position, like, may let it go to their head or whatever in it and just, like, involve themselves completely in that, whereas you seem to understand that there's more to life than just this. Obviously, this is your current goal, like, and you want to achieve yeah. that. No no doubt, but to know there's more the other side of it, like, you're never going to... Don't be wrong, You, I know you want to pin it all on it and you want to have success. I, you know, pretty much guarantee you will, like, you're doing really well, like, so... But yeah, to know yeah. there's more to life is is a good. That's it, and I put that down to um like a good a good support unit, you know, good friends, good family, yeah. um coaches and teammates, you know, the boys who coach me and the boys at the gym, they would never sort of let me my head swell and, and let me think I'm this 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 big superstar, you know, and and the same with my girlfriend and, and my mother and my sister, let them free alone uh, are enough to keep me yeah. grounded and, and you know let me that's know what you need though, let me it? know that I'm not too too big for my for my boots and and that's what you need that it's. Too many pe- people that sort of surround yourself with yes men and yeah. and and clingers on and you know I I think I put me you know people always say I'm I'm humble and grounded and I put that down to you know I've never changed the people around me the people around me now are the same people that was around me when I was a nobody and uh, and was around me when I was a young kid yeah. so th- that's why I put it down to you know having a good good support system as well trusting the people who've been there from the start and it because like you said you're probably going to get and it's probably going to get more and more and more like people want to take up your time like me <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to get it on you like yeah of course you know everything come everything comes with a price in in, in a way yes. like the the success is great and, and winning the fights is great but by winning the fights obviously your, your name gets out there more by your name getting out there more like you said you have more people who, who sort of want to be involved and you know i can remember being one and oh two and oh and it was probably Maybe two people are wanting me yeah. on, on a podcast and want to interview me. Whereas, whereas now I get messages every day about you know, can you do an interview? Can you do a podcast? You know, do you want to? Do, do, do you want me to do a written? I want to do a written article on you. So there, there's every, everything comes with with a price. But like you said, you gotta surround yourself with people that sort of got your best interest at heart and, and want you to do well and, and want your want your time for the right reasons, yeah, not yeah, not just for personal gain. Yeah, I agree, mate. Because it's so easy to get caught up in like oh this that then the other. I expect I expect you've like. You got to mo- like regulate it yourself, even you know what's right for you. I always find like when I'm really busy and I've got a lot on, I'm like this. I'm like, oh yeah, fucking dreaming, 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 and then I just crash. Like, yeah, I'm wrecked. Then yeah, it's it's a balance, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like I'll I'll be the first to say, especially when I got a fight coming up, my balance is is pretty poor. You know, it's it's all about the fight and training and recovering, ready for the next session. And you know, I probably don't see my family and friends as much as I should d- during a fight camp, but. You know, at the same time, t- it's 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 a job, and and like you said, if if I just keep going, you know, if I if I keep my sort of training going up, and then my family time and friends time going up, so if if both coming up, but before long, it's just gonna crash. Hundred percent. It's all about I, I try and keep the don't be wrong out of out of fight camp. Then I try and flip it the other way. So although training is is always my priority, if I've got to miss a session to. To, to go and see the family or, you know, if I've got to sort of change my training around or, or sort of not do an interview because I've got I've got stuff on with my girlfriend, and then I'll do that. But obviously, you've got to have the balance, right? You, yeah. It is a tough one to try and keep everyone happy. But, I mean, you know, we, we get better. We get better. I definitely get better at it with practice. Like, I'm a lot better at it now than, than I was maybe four or five years ago. I mean, when I first signed with Cage Warriors, it was just like train like a lunatic 24-7, yeah. fight or no fight. I, I was I was... Just, just training constantly. Whereas I'm training constantly now, but I'm doing it the right way. You know, I'm I've got a lot more, more balance in my life, which is uh, why I've, I why I think I'm so happy in, in what I'm doing. I I seen so many fighters who you can see they're not happy with their with their life. Really, yeah. you know, they they're chasing the dream and they they sort of realize that it's not as easy to to reach as you think. And then yeah. they, they, you know they want to go out with their friends, they want to spend time with their family, but they've got to sacrifice that. To, to train and have very very little reward for it, especially on like the local scene. Um, whereas you know you got to have someone who can show you show you that balance. I was always thankful I had my coaches, like obviously my old man Carl, Gary, who've all been there, seen yeah. it, and done it, got their experience in in what I'm doing. So they helped me along the way as well. But you know, I hope that perhaps in the future I can do the same thing for some of the boys at, at our gym and, and help them out the same way. But it is all about the balance. Yeah, definitely, mate. 
I want to, yeah, touch on, like, your coaches and everything. You're like Gary Lockett's gym, you train your boxing, is it? There's yeah. loads of killers, like, coming out of there. And Yeah, there. it's to to sort of, I mean, I've been training with Gary now, I think it's four and a half years since yeah. I was, I was 2-0 when I first sort of started training with Gary. And we just hit it off straight away. Um, very similar sort of personality and, and sense of humor. He's a bit more hard faced than me, Gary. You know, he's yeah. a, he's a bit of a frowner. But um, <laughs> you know, to to go down and train with him is, is a real privilege. He's he's one of the best boxing coaches in in the UK, if if not in the world. Um, you know, world champion and British champion himself. Won everything there was to yeah. win. Um, so to when I messaged him about about going down and training, I was looking for a new boxing coach, and he messaged me back straight away. I couldn't really believe it. It was it was a bit of a a shot in the dark. If anything, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, "I'll just drop my message and see what he says." And um, it, four years down the line, you know, I'm 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 training with him once or twice a week. I'm sparring with some of the the, the beasts down here, Chris Jenkins, Reese Edwards, and they're all really good boys. Like I go down there and spar, and you know, I'm not not a pro boxer by any means, but they they just bring you on so much. They they got nothing but time for me down there, and. Um, it's just a privilege. It's a privilege to be to be training with him, to be learning from Gary as well, who's, yeah. who's just got so much knowledge. And what what I've found with Gary is since like the four years we've been working, his, his sort of MMA knowledge has gone up as well. In the sense of the stuff he's showing me now is is all MMA related. Whereas when we first started, he was just look, I'll show you what I'm going to show you, but you've got to sort of make the tr- you've got yeah. to sort of understand. And he always said it. He said you've got to understand that there's going to be things I'm going to show you that may not be effective in MMA, whereas now there's certain things he won't have me do because, he, you know, he's saying you can't do that with a little pair of gloves on. You can't do that when someone can, you know, potentially kick you in the leg or shoot for a takedown. So he's a really educated guy as well, guy, despite being a, a tough fucker, you know. Oh, yeah. he's, a, he's really educated as well. So you can see he's got a, a really good fighting brain and there's a lot of MMA boys working with him now. Um, Lil Long has been working with him for years and... There's guys from my gym, guys from Lou's gym, um, guys from Newport who are working with him. And I think they're sort of seeing... Because, uh, I mean, when I went to... I could strike a little bit, but when I first went to Gary, I was just known as this, this wrestler, grappler, and then we got about three or four fights in, and I started to, to box a little bit. And I think people were like, well, you know, where, where's he learned this to? How, yeah. how come we've never seen this before? And um, I think people are starting to see now that he's obviously one of the best, or if not the best, boxing coach about and. He's got a very good sort of style of coaching that translates well to MMA as well. That just you know that goes to show in the boys. He's we got, I mean like, there's a kid that trains with us, Levi Batch, and um, he he's just he was known. He was just a grappler. Levi was just yeah. just wrestle and grapple, and, and and his old man is good friends with Gary and said, oh can you know can you start um, doing a bit of training with him and um, j- just watching his. I think he's been training with Gary probably about a year now or just under a year and, and just watching his progression in 10 months. He's like a 20, 21 year old. No, he's not even that. 19. Yeah. You know, so to see him have that sort of level of coaching from from so young on, you can just see the improvements in him straight away. He's punching different. He's moving different. He, he's tightening up his guard. So, you know, someone like Gary, if uh, if, if obviously you want to learn to box or MMA especially, then, then he's, he's the guy to go and see. Ah, oh, class. I expect uh, he's enjoying the challenge as well. A bit of a change for him, and it transitioning into MMA and stuff. And yeah, I think it's. I think he enjoys it as well. You know, like um, he came out and cornered me at Copenhagen. And he, he was due to come to Vegas with me yeah. for the last fight, and um, you know, it's good. To, it's good to have him along f- for the journey as well. He's 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 been there and seen it and done it. Disp- you know, I lost him boxing. There's thing like I mean, when I fought in um, Copenhagen, going into the third round, it was just him in the you know just him spitting advice in the corner. And my old man and Carl sort of because the fight was. You know, the only way the guy was going to beat me going to the film was, was was by catching me and knocking me out. So yeah. they just sort of took a back seat and I was like, God, you know, what what's he doing this round sort of thing? And, you know, it's nice to have him involved and have him as part of the team. And I would have him there every fight if if I could, you know. Yeah, Some, yeah. Sometimes, you know, the schedules don't line up. He's, he's got, boy, you know, he's got a big stable himself. He's got boys fighting. But, you know, whenever he's available, he, he'll be there in the corner. Is um, and I, I value his, I value having him there. You know, he's he's I feel a lot more comfortable with him there, especially when when there's a fight that's going to play out on the feet a little bit. Yeah. So uh, it's um it's good to have him along and hopefully now he can get that Vegas trip that he was looking forward to next year and uh, yeah. it doesn't get cancelled. Oh, mate, I hope something comes off soon. Like, is it anything in the pipeline? Uh, nof- nothing sort of, like, offered or, or confirmed. I've spoken to my manager, Graham, and just said, look, I, I'd, I'd like to fight early March. Um, So I can, I, I'm going on holidays in June with my girlfriend, so I want to get one in in March and then get a quick turnaround uh, for May, you know, so... Yeah. It, it needs to be, I mean, January, I'm in a bit of a situation, because January, February would be too early for me after Christmas, because I'd like to 
you know, I like to make sure I'm I'm fully prepared. But at the same time, I do want two fights before I go away next yeah. year to, to put me in good stead to then have maybe two, one or two at the end of the year. You know, I, I need a busy year next year, especially after this year. So no, nothing c- confirmed on their end yet, but but Graham knows. I mean, I'm in for March, and I, he, he's good at what he does, so I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll lock together that one you know, locked in for me maybe early after Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hope something comes off, mate, because it's been a while. What is it? Yeah, March now, is it? Is uh, it? July. Oh, July, July yeah, yeah, July. But, I mean, it's probably the least active I've been since I started yeah. fighting or, or started even competing. I was always, oh, I've always been active. And, I mean, I fought uh, September 2019, and then I didn't fight till July 2020, and I'm probably not going to fight till you know, March 2021, so I don't like being inactive like this, you know, I like to like to be busy, if I'm fit now, if I like to keep fighting, I, I only ever want to be on the sidelines if if my body's forcing me to through injury, you know, so fingers crossed next year will yeah, be a little yeah. bit of a, I got my visa now, and Fight Island, is, it seems to be like that's going to be a regular thing, so, you know, there's no reason next year why I can't get three, four fights, you know, quite, quite comfortably. Yeah, yeah, mate, I think it'd be great, mate, to see you Fight again? Is there anyone like you want to fight? There's no one specifically. I mean, there's a lot of guys in the division at the minute. It's, it's full of killers. Um, there, there's guys who mean who are not necessarily ranked, but are, are on the verge of being ranked and and are very good guys. And I know if I can get a fight book with one of them, I sort of steal their spot a little bit. Like you got your your Brian Kellers, your your John Jonathan Martinez, Song Yadong. These are yeah. all guys who, who've got names and reputations, but they're just outside of that top fifteen ranking. So. If I can get a fight booked with them sort of the end of next year, that puts me there then on, on the on the verge, you know, where going into the to the next fight then I could potentially think, right, let's let's get me a rank fight and now. Yeah. You know, someone someone who's ranked like 15, 14, 13 is not gonna not take a fight with someone who's just outside the rankings. Whereas at the minute I've only had two fights in the UFC. No one at rank fifteen to ten is gonna wanna take a risk of fighting me because if they lose, you pretty much just swap positions. So uh, I, I do need a couple of fights yet before yeah. I can start pushing for the rankings, but it's all about timing and, and you know, taking the opportunities that, that, that present themselves. Like, there's guys like um, like Marlon Vera was was, was a perfect example. Yeah, like, he, he wasn't even ranked. He, he had a bit of a name for himself, though. Jumped in and fought um, Chito Vera. Uh, uh, sorry, no. Jumped in and fought Sean O'Malley. Yeah. And uh, who had a lot of hype behind him, you know, was ranked. 10 or something like that or 9 and took him out quite comfortably and now now he's fighting oh, yeah. he's fighting Jose Aldo who's ranked number 3 so in the space of two fights if he beats Aldo he could go from you know not being ranked at all to, to potentially fighting for the title so it's all about opportunities and timing and I'm, yeah. I'm sure next year um, or the end of next year even my uh, my time will start to come then I believe yeah 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 like his, his stock's gone right up after fighting him yeah and 100% mad, like. and I mean look he's not like um not like O'Malley's this this world beat there, but the, you know he's got the he's got the charisma and the character, yeah. and the UFC would get him a lot of backing. So for Vera, you know, it made every sense in the world to fight him because by beating him, he's maybe not he's he's not stole all the exposure, but he stole all the hype. Like you know, there was, there was big hype behind Sean. They were saying, you know, he's going to fight for the belt. He's going to be like the the Conor McGregor of the win, division. He? He's expected to win, and someone like uh, Cheeto Vera, you can't count him out. You know, he. Yeah. he Come, come over as like an immigrant and grew up tough on the streets and, and you know never count someone like him out of a fight he may not win every fight he's in but you know you're never going to have an easy night against him win, win lose or draw so oh, he's a beast, isn't to, he? to see him you know, get that win and get some much you know much deserved exposure now he's in against Aldo it, it just shows that um, you know if, if you're ready to take the risks and, and sort of take those big names on then you'll reap the rewards yeah the whole division is full of killers, like you said, isn't it? From top to bottom, the top 15 yeah. is like, and I'm sure below that as well, you know, it's, it's mental, isn't it's it? It's insane. Like, it's, these guys, may, like, although they're not officially ranked, like, you, you, you talk, like, from rank 15 to 25, so there's, there's 10 guys there. All of them could potentially be top 10 guys yeah. quite comfortably. It's just the division is our talent stacked that, you know, they, in any other division, perhaps they, they would be ranked yeah, top yeah. 10, but it's just because there's so many good guys in division now, and, it's exciting times, like people always, you know, it's always that question, who do you want to fight? And, you know, when are you going to fight for the belt? And it's like, you know, every fight's a tough fight. You're never going to have an easy fight in the UFC, especially in the bantamweight division. So it's one of them, you know, you've just got, i got to be ready now to, to fight anyone with any style because there's not like, there's a there's a style in the UFC at the minute that is dominating. You know, for years it was sort of the, the wrestling style. Then for years it went back to being a striking style. Um, and then... 
no, it's just like one champion is a wrestler, one champion's a striker, yeah, no. one champion's a grappler. It, it, it's one of them, and, and there's so many different boys in the top ten with different styles. Like you compare the styles of like Aldo to people like you know Aljamain Sterling. You got Mirab, who's an elite level wrestler, and then you got your elite level strikers like um, uh, San Diego and yeah. Marlon Marias and Peter Yan, the champion. It's just such a contrast of styles. It's like you. If you're in that division, you better be you better yeah. be training in every area because there's no one set path to victory there. You've got to be able to do it all now. Dillashaw's coming back as well by the looks of it. Yeah. That's 2021 is suspensions up, yeah. I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so Dillashaw's... I mean, Dillashaw will be back in the mix now. I think if um, if Jan and Sterling had fought in December like they were meant to, I wouldn't be surprised if Dillashaw went straight in and fought for the belt. Yeah. So I don't think that'll happen now. I think, obviously, they got to rebook that fight. But um, Dillashaw will it'll be straight back in against the top he three will, guy yeah, without a doubt. So... Again, that's another name back in the mix, uh, you know, d- depending on how he comes back. Now he's off the juice. It's, we don't know how long he's on the juice for, <laughs> no, see, so true, yeah. it all depends how he comes back. But, he, you know, juicing or not, he is, he is a, an elite level guy himself. So that's that's another name in the mix that, uh, that we got to keep an eye on now. Yeah. So it's it's exciting times to, to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be interested to see how his cardio goes because he was like cardio king when he, that's what he was known for. Yeah. And EPO is known for your cardio, isn't it? It's, well, Exactly, like Lance Armstrong, it, it, isn't it? And and there's been sort of like when he had the feud with um with Cody, you know, he was saying you've been, you know, he sort of said even back then before he got caught, you've been juicing for years, and he was telling all the guys at Alpha yeah. to do it, and then he gets popped, and you start to think, well, has he been? Why would you he know? say that? Like, it's it's yeah. just awful convenient how he's had these out like people from his old gym say these things to him, and now he's been caught. It's like. Well, how long has he been doing it then? Or, or was there a one-off? You, you generally don't know. So like you said, this will be the test now because I guarantee you now he's back fighting and now he's back sort of, you know, in, in the rankings or whatever. They're going to be testing him a couple of times a week, every week. Like, you know, you saw the, they can turn up whenever. So I wouldn't be surprised he's getting visited. Every, like John Jones at the minute, I see online, is getting tested every other day pretty much. Is he, yeah. Because he's it's going insane. up a weight. You know, they're trying to catch you. If, yeah, if, yeah. If, Someone like TG, you know, he's come back from doing what he's done. They're going to try and catch him doing it again. They're going to say, book him a fight, and, and they're going to be on him every day. Number one, hopefully, you know, put him off doing it because he's getting tested so much. But, you know, it's going to be very difficult for him to come back and do it again now and not get caught. So he's yeah. probably going to come back clean. And then, like you said, we'll see then if uh, if that cardio and that athleticism he had was, was natural or, or if it was from, yeah, the, uh, from, the, from the juice. Yeah, it will be interesting. You see it, like, with the fight as years gone by, when the TRT was dropped off, they all like fell apart, didn't they? A lot of the big yeah. Names. Well, Usada has killed so many elite level guys, like like you say, your Vito Balfort, yeah. um, and people who've never been caught since Usada come in. But you just see since Usada came in, they just their performances just drop massively. Like people like Johnny Hendricks went from one punch starch and everyone to all of a sudden Usada have come in, and I think he lost like five out of six yeah. fights, something like that. Same with. Um, you know, Chris Weidman, I'm a massive Chris Weidman fan, and he's never been caught taking steroids, but since Usada's come in, he, he's lost a shared load of fights, and, you know, may, maybe these guys, it could be a supplement thing, because, like, wh- when when you get put in the testing pool, you got have you got to have supplements that are registered by Usada, pretty yeah. much, so perhaps these guys were taking supplements that, you know, are not registered, and it's affecting their performances, I don't know, it, it could just be pure luck, it could just be that Weidman, or people like him, and... I'm just trying to think of other names like Balfour and Weidman. Uh, perhaps they come into the tail end of their career and that's where they're picking up these losses. Yeah. Or it could be that that, that you saw them. Yeah, like, you, yeah, you just you just don't know. But you know, it's it's obviously for the good, you know, because if people are getting caught left, right, and centre, then then there's a, there's they're worth every penny. They're worth having Definitely. there because um, you know, it's not ideal when they turn up your house six o'clock in the morning or you've just finished <laughs> sparring, you're a little bit dehydrated and then they want you to, to piss in a cup and, uh, you know, you've got to wait around for an hour. But at the same time, I'm all for doing it because if it means the guy I'm fighting is not going to be, you know, pumped full of gear, then... It's an it, unfair advantage, isn't it? Of course it is. I've fought guys in cage warriors and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, you know, I, uh, I'm i not stupid. You, you know and you can tell when someone is, is full of juice and... Unfortunately, especially in in Europe and and the domestic scene, you they can't afford to to employ someone like you saw that to yeah. drug test all the time. But to to be at the elite level, it's got to be in place. And um, it's surprising it took as long for it did Definitely, for it yeah. to actually come in. And I heard I think I heard a GSP interview uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I think he beat Johnny Hendricks. And then that was a tough fight. He was saying that they they 
basically the UFC said, look, we'll sign you both up to VADA, which at the time was the drug testing agency. And GSP said, yeah, and then Hendricks wouldn't sign up to it. And then he said, ultimately, that's what led to him retiring afterwards. He was like, you know, they they know that people are doing it. If you're not, if you're not prepared to sign up to a drug testing thing, it's, it's only for one reason. It's obvious, isn't it? It's obvious. So... It just makes you think, you know, like it was so rife at one time in the sport. I'm just glad they're about now and that they catch it. Because, I mean, Dilla Short, you know, essentially got sparked out, didn't he, in 20 seconds, whether he was on the juice or not. But he did, yeah. at the same time, it doesn't make it right. That, well, it could have gone the other way, it. couldn't it? And if I'm honest, I think if he had won the fight, the ban probably would have been a lot harsher than, than two years. Yeah. The I, fact that they've only given him a two year ban for, for blood doping is a little bit. Um, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you see like the 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 slack um, Lance Armstrong had for it. You know, oh, he I know. stripped of his titles, overturned, banned for life, stuff like that. So I think, in my opinion, if you get caught using steroids, blood doping, you should be banned for life. It's not a tainted supplement, no. like, is it? Uh, like a, know, again, a tainted supplement. Like you can, you know, you can understand it a little bit because you don't know what's in the supplements. If they can prove, look, you took something tainted. Or, you know, you see guys getting banned for smoking weed. Is weed really a performance and answer? Probably not, is it? So I, I can deal with, like, the six-month bans and the one-year bans for, for stuff like that. But to open openly admit that you blood doped for a fight and openly admit you've took steroids, you've got to be banned for life. It, yeah. it, it just doesn't make any sense. How you... It is crazy, like, because you are potentially going in there and ruining someone else's life as and well. And someone like Dillashaw, who's, who's made millions, and, like, you know, he's a multi-millionaire from fighting, so... Is is two years on the sideline yeah. for him that big a deal? Pro- probably not. It's probably good for him. He's, he's had probably good for him. Yeah, he, he, like he's like you said, he's had a couple of operations. He's had a chance to reset his mind a little bit. Relax. Two years off has probably done him more good than it has bad. Yeah. And um, you know, he, he's not financially in any trouble because he's a multi-millionaire. You know, he's got yeah. businesses set up through fighting. So it makes you think. You know, is it fair that he gets them two years off? He could come back now a different beast, or because. He cheated in the first place. Which is like, yeah. he, has he really been punished for cheating? I, I don't think so on a two-year ban. Well, especially, like, you know, where does that purse go, like, that he made for that fight he cheated on? Does exactly. he still get paid? Like, he, he shouldn't, he, like, you should yeah. be giving it away, he shouldn't get, you? I know he, got, he gets fine, but in the reality, is, are they finding him as old person? No, he, he still pocketed a good amount of cash. And, I mean, you look back... F- I think it was five, six years or five years ago. Nick Diaz got banned for five years for smoking weed. I was in set, and they like they still rolled it yeah, on for even five when years. They changed the rules, and then they changed the rule. They dropped it down to like an eighteen month ban, and it was like, yeah, but he's already been sat out for three years. So you've taken away his life. You've taken away a year and a half because he smoked weed. Yet you got guys who are, who are getting caught juicing, and they're having a two year ban. And this is not me saying it as I'm some big weed smoking advocate. I've mean, I've I don't smoke weed. Like it, it doesn't appeal yeah, yeah. to me. So I'm not just saying that as if like it's something I do and it should. That's that's not the case, but it's like, how are you gonna ban him for five years for two yeah. and a half, and then say to TJ, oh, you know what, you you admitted you did wrong, you know, have have a two year ban. Yeah. It's like no, it's not it. Don't be fucked. He, he still did it. Whether yeah. he admitted, he only admitted it because he got caught. Yeah. If he didn't get caught, what would have happened? He probably would have done the same thing for the next fight. Exactly. So, yeah. And just just like like he could be turning people over, like because it only you know at that elite level, I'm sure it's like. Inches in it, you know. There's there's a little bit between winning and losing. And look, he's not he's not doing it himself, is he? Like blood, blood doping is a complex process. Yeah. He's not doing it. He's got people around him who are probably experts at doing it. Who are doing it for him. So who's to say he hasn't been doing it for years and, I, and hasn't? And only has only just now slipped up. And and vice versa. Who's to say he's not going to do yeah. it in the future? And you say, ah, you got caught because of this. We'll still do it, but we'll tweak this a little bit. I don't want to like just slag him off, but I'm looking at it like he's got this scientist coach who didn't know. Like that's what fucking gets yeah, me. Yeah, that's why. Like, <laughs> oh, it's nothing to do with my coach. He's like, what? So he didn't see you this injecting mega scientist, didn't like... see you injecting <laughs> bags, bags full of blood into your arm. Like, come on, get off, get off it. And then like you just sat, you spent the last six, six to eight weeks together yeah. training every day, like you know, like you've said in the build up. And this guy was the the master behind it. Always, analyzes like, yeah, everything. Analyzes everything. <laughs> analyzes your your stats, your DNA. He's like, well, but he didn't. He didn't see a change. Seems in, insane yeah, to me. So like, it doesn't add up, does it? You know, uh, doesn't add up at all. <laughs> I know that whole thing. Like, I was just like, oh, I, can, I can't believe this. Like, when they're saying it, but it's insane. How he's like, like how he's back already. It's just yeah. baffling to think. But you know, what, what are you gonna do? You know, well, that's it. Yeah, that's hopefully it. he comes back clean and, and gets his ass handed to him a couple of times, and, and that'll be the end of him. You know, yeah. and we'll see whether or not he was uh, he was juicing all the time, or whether it was just a one off. Yeah, time will tell, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, mate. So, uh, March. Now you're looking at then. That's the that's the turnaround. Yeah, Mar- March would be ideal. Um, 
I, I, hopefully, I don't want it alone, no later than March because, yeah. like I said, I do want uh, that quick turnaround to fight again. Um, but before June, so any time in March, you know, there's, there's a big show on the six, and then I think there's shows every weekend. So I got my visa now. Like I said, it's not. It will be in Vegas, I should imagine, because that yeah. month from what I'm gonna make of the schedule, it's a Vegas month. Um, so fingers crossed, you know, we get that, get that. But I, again, I don't know who it's gonna be against, or you know. Could change as well. Could, in the could change, it probably change. Going, like. It'll probably change about four times. Yeah. I expect knowing, knowing me, I, I don't think I can't remember. Well, I've never had a fight in the UFC with the opponent haven't changed. It's um, crazy, isn't it? Apart from the one in London, the, the guy I was meant to fight in London obviously didn't pull out. The, but the show got pulled. But like my last, like my first fight, and then obviously the last, the the fight island fight, and then the one that got cancelled. The opponent have been yeah, changing yeah. all of them and multiple times in some of them. So. I just at this stage I think I'll fight anybody if it means I get the fight. So that that's the goal. Um and obviously it lines up well like uh, Brett Johns is is with Belt or now I know he's looking to fight March or, or you know, at the earliest end of February. Um and I think there's talk of uh Cage Warriors Wales card potentially in March ah, cool. as well for some of the amateurs and yeah. um and some of the novice pros and like obviously I've got boys who, who are my train training partners who are elite level amateurs and you know on the verge of turning pro so it sort of lines up perfectly. I mean, with all them fighting in March, if I can fight as well, it just sort of means that after Christmas now we're all sort of going to be straight to yeah. it, all in the gym and, and and all sort of grinding it out. So it it always helps, you know, not not necessarily having them in camp with it, but it always helps when there's a reason for the boys to be in the gym because obviously you approach that trait the training a little bit differently. You know, they're training with a uh, they're training for a purpose, you know, They're not just not just like training to train. You know, they want to, they want to be taking me out in training and, and and dominating me just as much as I want to be dominating them because they are training for a fight as well. Yeah. So it always ups the intensity a little bit, um, and and it ups the sort of the morale in the team. You know, yeah. Everyone is sort of dieting and and bringing their weight down and running and 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 doing their circuits and doing them extra rounds together. So I always enjoy fight camp a little bit more when there's there's a good few of us. Yeah. Um, in it together and it always tends to be after Christmas is when that happens because everyone's had their little break and, and they're rearing to go ready for the first show of the year so yeah fingers crossed uh, March and um, fingers crossed it's uh, hopefully against someone who, who, who people know as well you know not just um, like an unknown yeah yeah definitely mate I, I was gutted about like London because we had tickets to go as well and uh, <laughs> I know I, I expect you've read that a hundred no, times no honestly well, mate like, like I've got I've got like a group of friends who, who I, I grew up in school with and um, there was about, I don't know how they managed, because tickets obviously for the London shows are like, oh, like, like gold us. So how, how, how 40 of them managed to get tickets, I don't know, but they did. And um, they couldn't wait, you know, they, they were just as buzzing for it as yeah. I was. And um, a lot of them came to Copenhagen, so they couldn't get over how, like, how much of a step up the UFC was, how big the venue was and the production. Yeah. And because Cage Warriors is big, you know, in Wales, but... You know, you're talking a level up again. So they were buzzing for it. Um, Marshall was due to fight on the card as well. So I think the majority of App Leary would have been in um, yeah, in London yeah. that weekend. So to have it cancelled was just it was just a uh, shit for everyone to be honest. Yeah. You know, for the coaches who put in all the hard work for myself, um, and obviously all, all all the team as well. Like I had teammates who were who were fighting two weeks after as well. So. Like they 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 were obviously their shows got cancelled as well because yeah. obviously like the leisure centres and stuff like that got cancelled. So you know it hasn't just been a shit year for me. Everyone in the oh, gym yeah, has struggled definitely. this year. There's there's boys who haven't fought for sort of a year to eighteen months and and through no fault they're on. Like Josh Reed's fighting now Friday and he hasn't fought since last uh, October. And yeah. again, like he wanted a busy year this year just like we all did. But it's it, it's it's one of them. I I mean I just hope the crowds can come back before long because. I would love the fight in that that old two arena. I've done the Indigo, and I'd love to just it's the it's the closest one we're going to have to a Welsh show, I think, for a long time. So to to be able to take a good couple of hundred Welsh up there, yeah, to to show the, even just to show the UFC, look, you know, we've got a big fan base here. We 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 could do a show in Wales when when um Definitely, when the yeah. right venue becomes available. It'd just be nice to to sort of have have, have that happen if ever, and I. Could even be like the last fight for a long time where a lot of people like friends and family get to come and watch. That's you know, it. They haven't watched me now, my my family and a lot of my friends since like April uh, twenty nineteen when I last fought in Cardiff. I mean, I had a good handful of boys came to Copenhagen because they managed to get tickets, but I didn't get it to that card till four weeks before. Yeah. So even that was a was a struggle. So it, it would have been nice to just you know have them come and, and enjoy it again and enjoy a fight night, but uh, it wasn't the bees. But fingers crossed. 
You never know. We we could have crowds back by the end of the year in the UK, yeah. so they may even change the schedule up and think, right, we'll come to London end of the year, which, which would be yeah. a great way to finish the year. You know, when you consider the first sort of the first thing that the got cancelled was London, it'd be nice to end next year now on uh, on a fight in oh, the UK. That would be great. Be great. Mate. It'd be good, like to get your face around the UK more as well, and then like you yeah. probably build a hell of a following. Like of course you say, it you does. Yeah, in there shouting your name. And it, stuff it built. Like it. I mean, I got a good following in the UK, but that just is another level altogether. Yeah. You know, like. People like Jimmy Manuel then, like looking back, I remember he always had a big following when he was fighting on on Bama and um, UCMMA and stuff. But then all of a sudden he started fighting in the UFC on like UFC London um, and on the European cards, and his his profile went to like another level again. Yeah. So you know it'd be nice to like you said, a- any exposure is good exposure, especially when it's when it's people who would you know people watch UFC. They're not just there to watch me; they're genuine MMA fans. Definitely. That's the difference I've noticed now is I've got people from all over the world messaging me who are fans and have watched me and like you know enjoy my style and enjoy watching me fight whereas sometimes in Cardiff it was just all, all my lunatic friends and and, and, <laughs> and family that I've sort of built up through fighting in cage warriors just rocked up and yeah. you know that's why I think they started putting me on last in the end because I would fight in Newport and they'd put me on first on the main card and the atmosphere would be buzzing you know they'd be packed in there um, I'd fight and then like because they know MMA fans my friends they, they just like yeah, to watch me fight, fight so yeah. by half nine I'm done there's four fights left and and it's dead in there you know they all gone they're like no you fought no we're, we're, we're off back to the pub <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see you back in town so I think in the end they thought right let's just make a main event so, yeah. they, so they stay in there all night it, it was wild down. I went down to Cardiff for your last fight in Cage yeah. Warriors me and my missus were there I don't think she knew what the fuck was going on to be <laughs> <laughs> it is um, it is a mental atmosphere but Excuse me. I always say to people, this um, they're not hostile, you know. They, oh no, they're no. not. They're not like uh, it's not like a football crowd, and we go worry about it kicking off. They they just they, they're all pissed up, and they're just there for a party. To be honest, they yeah. they there to party and enjoy yourself. When I come out, they get serious for a couple of minutes. You know, when I won, then they they, they hit the roof and they oh, was insane. And that then night. It's, and then it's off the car if they enjoy the rest of the night. So like that's what people have always said to me. Like people who I don't even know, they've like you know we we were sat by all your lot and it was just a wicked night because we were sat by them, you know, like yeah. I, I would have, um, there's boys from the gym, like one of the boys, Jordan Peak, he sells a load of tickets and uh, he fight. He was fighting on the amateur cards and and uh, he used to ask um, Colin who sorted the tickets out, can you sit my lot, he said, by Tank's lot, he said, because they all sort of know each other but they, they want to be with them lot to to enjoy <laughs> the atmosphere and it'll be like, it'll be double the crowd and then we had to pull a couple of strings, you know, and, uh, and get a couple of blocks of tickets next to each other but, uh, I used to love those nights in Cardiff and the, and the Newport Centre, to be fair. I really used to enjoy fighting in the Newport yeah. Centre because of the way it was laid out. And uh, to be honest, the the boys who uh, who followed me for so long and the fans, they, they, I've got credit a lot to them, a lot more than, than I do. They know I, I, I appreciate them, but I, to just to verbally give them a bit of credit, you know, I, I think the reason my career propelled like it did in Cage Warriors is because of the fan base. Like, yeah. I wasn't a trash talker. I obviously had the skills, but I was never like the guy to run my mouth and get publicity that way. I was just always known as the guy as when he fights, is there's going to be a, a big crowd coming yeah. to watch him. And, um, you know, I think that's what ultimately led the Newport show to, to Cardiff in the end because I was selling something like 400-odd tickets for the for the Newport show. Well, it only seats 1,300 people. Yeah. So they were having to give me like a third or, or yeah, like a third of the tickets that were available yeah, yeah. to everyone else. And they were like, look, Everyone else wants more tickets as well to sell to people. It's like, you can't have this many tickets. And I was like, well, I can't. <laughs> what am I meant to do? I can't say no to people. And they're like, right, perhaps we need to uh, to look at a bigger venue. And um, the Ice Arena then came along, obviously. And that, and that was uh, that was awesome. It felt like uh, it felt like a UFC venue until I've actually fought in a UFC yeah. venue. And then you appreciate how big those venues are. But uh, uh, as far as shows in Wales go, I think the, the Ice Arena ones are the best shows Oh, they, they've had a date yeah. and, and they, they'll struggle unless they're going to build like a, a big venue for the UFC you know obviously you've got the Millennium Stadium they, they're going to struggle to find a better venue than um, than the Ice Arena especially if they can find someone now who can sell it out from I mean at the minute they may struggle with, with me being gone and now Mason has obviously yeah. signed for UFC so straight away that's a big hit and the ticket's gone um, but if they can find something to sell it out it's a cracking venue and uh, it'd be nice to see them go back there again yeah, I, I agree as well. I, I always go to them events now, I think, as long as you can get a crowd in there. It's, it's proper weird setup, isn't it? Because they've just got mats all over the ice, haven't they? Yeah. When I was in there, I don't know if, like, any of your mates said, 
I just for some reason didn't expect it to be like that. I was yeah. fucking frozen. Like. It was, I was gonna say <laughs> everyone, everyone that, like the first shows in September, and everyone was like it was fucking freezing in there. And then they rocked up to the show in December, and they all had like they all, <laughs> they all had a night out with their blades on, but they all got puffer coats ready to zip up to watch the fight. And uh, they always said like they would never make the same mistake twice. Yeah. I mean. They they didn't want to sit on the ice a second time, so it was too cold. But then they obviously was like, "Oh, you, we want to we want to be close to the cage as well." But um, yeah, they literally just like you said, they just put mats over the ice and, and like... knocked the cage on top. So when I remember walking into the cage for the ice arena shows, and there was a towel on the floor because the floor is that wet. Obviously, you take yeah. you, you take your shoes off to get to get sort of checked down to go into the cage. By the time you walk up the steps, your feet will be soaking <laughs> wet, and the, and the cage warriors canvas is like a vinyl canvas, so it's, it's slippery anyway. So be a matter of, like kicking your feet off yeah, before you get in the cage so you don't have to slip. But uh, like you said, awesome, awesome venue. It's just, it's just hopefully now they can they can build a couple of stars on the Welsh scene um, and and give them a bit of a bit of a push so that they can sell them extra tickets to uh, to sell it out. Yeah, yeah. I think like Josh Reed's a good person to get behind, like as well. And he's he, you know yeah, Josh he came real close, didn't he? Yeah, he like, did. The UFC. I'd Josh say. has got a big following as well. Um, you know he. he had a good year to be fair in 2019. I think he won three and lost one, so you've coming off the year on a win. And like he's, like we said, it would have been ideal for him this year to, to maybe get three fights in. Yeah. If he wins all three, it puts him in a good spot to headline the show again because he's headline shows in London and, and Newport. Um, but obviously he can only get a one in, which it, which is this weekend now. So if he wins that, gets another win in next year. Maybe when the crowds come back, then they can give yeah. him a bit of a push. There's, there's good up and comers coming up in Wales, but at the minute they're sort of like. Two or three pro fights deep, so they they need a little bit of you know a little bit extra of a push, I suppose. Like Oban Elliott is a big name, and yeah. I know he lost his last fight, but he's he's one that everybody seems to know at the minute, despite only having four pro fights. Um, so if he can get another win now, maybe early next year, they can they can they'll they'll put a push behind him because he talks the talk very well yeah. as well. So um, his name's like blown up in it real fast. I'd yeah, say. and again, that's the. The benefit to to being able to sort of have the gift of the gab and and and, and talk well because yeah. he's got this persona online and and he talk. Like, I mean, he, he come in here now. He's completely different. Like he's 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 a he's a real good guy, a real nice guy. But he he, he talks well and he can hype a fight up. You know, if if you want want a fight hyped up, he's your man to do it. <laughs> and for someone who's f- I think he's three and one maybe or four and one to have like the. Have as many people talking about him as he is, and only have had that many fights. It's, it's insane. It, it just it? shows how, how how much of a, a tool social media can be if you use it the right way. And yeah. um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's going up the welt the weight now, so I'd, it'd be nice to see him back in there and, and, and see him at that weight and and sort of see him grow into a welt the weight and hopefully get a push behind him next year. And and maybe he can sell the ice arena out at the end. Who knows? You know, if he can get three fights in next year, and then they do. I mean, this, he probably could. If he, he? Can, if he can get three in by maybe September, and then they do a December card, it, it'd be great to see him. Um, you know, yeah. in, 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 even if he's not the headline, if he's just on the main card, and maybe maybe they bring in a title fight f- for the main event, he'd still sell the show out. Yeah, yeah, I think he could definitely be a big name. Like in, well, he already is kind of in he like locally and stuff. Yeah, he's a he's a big name now, especially on the local shit. It's just a matter of him. Sort of everyone knows who he is. He just needs the fights now and, and his apprenticeship to sort of right. Not only is this guy a good talker, but he, he can fight as well. We all know in the gym how good he is. It's just a matter of him getting them fights booked yeah. and, and rattling them fights off. And I think at well the weight now, he won't have a massive weight cut, so you'll probably be able to to fight a lot more uh, regularly. Whereas at lightweight, he, he did have a big weight cut. You know, he looked look tough. It, like it, it took him a long. It takes him a good 10, 12 weeks to get down to the weight. Whereas at well, that he could probably fight every six weeks if he wanted to. So. You know, there's no reason why he can't get four in next year, and then he's in he's yeah. in good stead to to make a run at the title then the following year after that. Yeah, like like you said about him coming in here and being more humble and whatever. I seen the uh, podcast he did with your dad. Yeah, and like you said, he was completely different person. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. It's like he's he know he, real nice guy. He really understands the game. Like he understands that. You know, unfortunately, you can't always be that quiet guy that just turns up and fights, which is great to to, to be that guy. No doubt, those guys have skills, but a lot of the time. People they they ways they need ten fights before people start talking about them. Someone like Oban only needed three because, you know, he's he's got that sort of chill sun invite them online yeah. a bit like a WWE size. What he, re- he reminds me of, and um, but but when you speak to him in person, you you can just tell he's um, you know, he's a real grounded kid. He's had a tough upbringing, you know, <coughs> tough tough life as a youngster, you know, with with his dad passing away and stuff like that. So he's grown up tough, and and I'm sure. 
you know, I know he lost his last fight, but it on be the breaking of him. I'm sure now he's going up the weight, it'll be the making of him. So yeah. next year is uh, is the year for him. I'm 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 open, and I know the the coaches at the gym uh, see all his potential and what he's got to offer. So it's just a matter of time, a matter of him getting a fight. But yeah. really, and like. No, no one's invincible, are they? Anyone can lose on the night. And Look, everyone loses, especially in this game. You know, very, very rarely. I know you got Khabib, but he's he's a one-off enigma, isn't he? How like, many you know, do you know that have retired undefeated in in this sport? People like Anderson Silva, even at his prime, had something like three or four losses, even when he was on a ten-fight win yeah. streak. Um, John Jones is undefeated technically. I know, um, not technically, but but you know, yeah, yeah I know, he's he undefeated. One, but apart from him and Khabib, you, you look at all the champions in the UFC. They've all got oh, and Stylebender, of course. But yeah. even he's lost at kickboxing and stuff like that. So no one's invincible. It's it's one of them sports where, you know, you sort of learn on the job. It's not like boxing where you have fifteen fights against you and you meant to build your confidence and 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 improve yeah. your skills. You know. In this game, you're straightening 50-50 fights from the off. You may have one journey, went to kick off your pro career, get that one and all. But then it's especially when I fight for cage warriors like me. I signed the cage warriors at one and all, and uh, I was straight in the deep end. I was fighting guys two and all, yeah. three and one, four and all, nine and two. Uh, Von Lee was like fourteen and fourteen, something like that. So there's there's no record pad in with cage warriors. If you want to fight for them, you know, as much as the luxury as it is with them being Europe's top promotion, you're not gonna you're not gonna be uh, you know, Molly Coddled, you're gonna be straight in there and, and if you if you're gonna be the best in the division, you better prove it by, by winning your fights. Yeah. And and that's how it should be. Like ga, ga, again, going back to Guy Lockett, he, he says that um boxing could learn a lot from MMA. He's like, there's no you know, why he said there's boys in boxing who are twenty and oh and haven't had a had a fight really. They they've fought guys who were in there to lose. They knew they were gonna win. They knew they're gonna win from the off. So it, you know, you don't approach a fight like that the same way because you know you're gonna win. When you're approaching a fight with someone you think, right, he's in you to, to, to spoil my night he's in you to, to beat me like yeah. like I'm in you to beat him then you have a different mindset going in and um, perhaps perhaps boxing could could go down that route a little bit I think like why why be 20 and all with, with with no real credible wins wouldn't you rather be 12 and 2 or 15 and 2 and yeah, yeah you've lost two fights but you've got 10 of those 15 wins are against good level guys who were in there to beat you that's, that's what I would I would yeah, I never asked good. for an easy fight I've never looked for an easy fight um I fought one journeyman in my first pro fight because my opponent pulled out the day before the weigh-in and they couldn't get on in in time. Yeah. Um, so it's one of them. It's like, you know, if if we can all go down that route, and that's why MMA, you you know, you're one promotion in the UFC or the world's elite. You always see the best guy in the division is legitimately the best guy. There's no qu- You'll never see a champion in the UFC and people are sort of saying, ah, yeah, but he's been he's had an easy run yeah. because even if he's had an easy run to the belt, he's got to beat the champion for the belt and then... The next fight, he's going to be fighting the number one contender. There, there's no like, you know, WBO, WBC, WBU, IBF. There's none yeah. of that. Like, oh yeah, but he's a mandatory, and there's none of that in in, in the UFC. Is if you're number one, you're going to fight the champion, or if you're number two, you're going to fight number one. That's how we go. That's the way it should be. And I think if they could do that in boxing, they they make enough money anyway. But they'd make a hell of a lot more money, I think, and sell a hell of a lot more pay per views. Be more interesting for people as well to watch, I think, wouldn't it? Yeah, like I'm a I'm a boxing fan myself, but I I'm not religious with it. You know, I don't watch every fight that's on. I don't watch um, I only watch the big fights. You know, like um, the Welsh boys obviously watching like your Canelo's, your Lomachenko's, yeah. your, your your Triple G's. Whereas in MMA, it can be a UFC card on a weekend, and I may only recognize one name, but I'll still put it on because you know the fights are fairly matched, and you know chances are there's going to be a couple of barn burners. Whereas in in boxing. Like this, say Canelo's fighting next week or whatever. I can guarantee you, there's probably three fights out of the ten there that are competitive fights. You know, the top three usually on the bill are, yeah. are fights where it's fifty fifty, and even two of them usually there's there's a guy who's got a good idea who's going to win and going to lose, and and the rest of the card is filled with prospects beating journeymen. It's, it's hard it, to follow. It's isn't hard it? to follow. It's like you watch the Anthony Joshua fights in Wembley or the Millennium Stadium. No one turns up until if Joshua's one out of ten, no one turns up until eight because yeah. they don't want to watch. You know, they don't want to watch people beating journeyman they they to watch fights whereas you watch these MMA cards around Wales and the UK like a cage warriors card they fill, very rarely does a cage warriors card not fill up till 9 o'clock they're there from 6 o'clock because yeah. every single fight on is 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 a 50-50 fight same with the UFC Vegas is a little bit different from what I've been told you know because they just turn up for the main event but everywhere else in the world there's 10,000 people in those arenas from the second fight of the night so Right when I fought in Copenhagen, I was first on, and there was the arena was full. Is it, you know, yeah. that was fu- that was 
five thirty in the afternoon, and then they will sit there from five in the, in the afternoon till ten in the night, eleven in the night, and, yeah. and that's because they know they're gonna get their money's worth. Whereas I think sometimes in boxing, like you said, is what well, six, seven fights on the card. It's just gimme fights. It is. It's hard to follow. Like with the UFC as well, I think they build people really well, don't they? In every fight. They really like stress the importance of who this guy is and who this guy is, yeah. and I think they do a real good job of explaining where you're from, like your backstory a bit and everything. I feel like it's, they they really invest in their fighters, and you know what you like, you know what you get, I suppose, in the sense of if someone comes to the UFC, like who's the who's the best, who's the best in the division at welterweight? It's like, well, it's the champion. Yeah, it's like how do you know he's the best in it because he's the champion? Whereas in boxing, it's like, right, who's the best welterweight boxer in the world? It's like, well, you've got five different belts, so. He may all three of them, but there's a guy who holds two, or there's a guy who holds one. It's like, well, what about them two? And then his opinions come in yeah. and politics, and it's like, whereas with the UFC, ultimately, if if you're the champion, you're the best in the division because you would have had to beat the next best guy to win the belt. Yeah. Um, and that's why the UFC champions very rarely hold the belt for a long time. Again, you got your Khabib and your John Jones, but for the most part, the belt is is jumping around because there's no sort of fighting the mandatory challenge out because he's a little bit of an easier fight than than the big money fight is. This is the guy you're fighting. You know, you were the champion. This is what you signed up for. Get on with it. I think that's why it's so good to watch, isn't it? Because it's so genuine. Like, Yeah, and I, I, that's why I think Dana White is... Although he can be, like, brash and outspoken, and that's why people got so much respect for him because he just puts on the fights people want to see. It's a mastermind, isn't if, it? If, if a fight builds a bit of traction behind the scenes, you know, that there's going to be... That people want to see this fight. Nine times out of ten, he makes a fight. You know, he doesn't protect anyone. Yeah, yeah. Even, like, Conor McGregor. I know people tried to say early on, Conor McGregor... Um, had a bit of an easy run to the belt, but the reality of it is there, and he beat yeah. Chad Mendes, he beat Jose Aldo, and then he beat, he had the, the thing with Nate Diaz, and he beat Eddie Alvarez, so may, maybe, did he get fast track to the belt? Maybe, but ultimately he went on to knock out Mendes, who was a two-time title challenger, and then knock out Aldo, who was the, the greatest yeah. featherweight, or greatest thing since since sliced bread, 10 years undefeated, so... Ultimately, even if you get the fast track, you you'll get found out in the end whether you're at the level or not because you will end up fighting the champion. It's not like they fast track into the belt and then give him give him some guy no one's heard of for the belt. He had to fight the champion, yeah. and that's why people love the UFC. And like even before that, when you take it back, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it had an easy run." We fought Holloway, Poirier. You like, look, you, exactly. can't... you look back on the, the people he fought now. All right, Den- the Den- the Dennis Dennis Siva maybe wasn't the greatest, but like you said, the two that stick out is Holloway and Poirier, who, who's well, they both fight fought each other for for an interim belt. All the yeah. way was a fairweight champion. You look at Poirier's at Poirier's resume in his last eight fights. I think he's seven and one. His only losses to Khabib, and and he's been taking out the best in the world yeah. consistently. So it's like look back on it and think, was it that easy of a run? Yeah. Pro- probably not. Definitely. And like with Siva and was it Brimage before that or whatever. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, Brimage was his first fight. They've got was, to have them fights. They, they didn't. You? you can't. They just didn't go know in. who he was when he fought yeah. Brimage. They were just like, right, probably fought. This is a new guy coming in. He's there at the Cage Warriors champion. Brimage has got had a decent record at the time. Let's chuck him in. Yeah. No, you would say Brimage is never on his level, but coming into his first you fight, know that, they didn't you? know who he was. Siva, I think Siva was just there to. I think he wanted to fight and, and no one was available, so they put Seaver in and, and that was where it was. But then he went on and fought Mendes and Aldo back to back and then Nate Diaz twice and then Eddie Alvarez and then Mayweather. So, yeah. you know. Insane, isn't it? And, and that's probably all down to Dana White again because he was like, let's, let's, let's check, you know, there was no, let's Marty Cardle him. Let's, let's, yeah. He wants to be the champion, so let's, let's see if he can be the champion. What do you think of uh, Mayweather's latest fight? Ah, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a fight that's gonna be. Um, okay, no, insane, it's, it's mental and it just like it's just nuts that you, you think. You just on, know the result, didn't you? You like, think on paper like you've got a guy who's had two exhibition fights. He was a YouTuber. He was famous for being a YouTuber. And he's fighting now someone who, who's considered by a lot of people as um, the greatest pound for pound fighter ever. Some yeah. people call Mayweather, and I, I'm one of those. I'm a big Mayweather fanboy. Like I, yeah. I'll fight his corner t- t- till the end, and. Now he's gonna fight Logan Paul and his fifty pound weight difference. It's just gonna be a. It's not gonna be a fight. Is it? It's isn't a it? spectacle. It's, it's to make them both a shed load of money, and you know people can say and slag it off all they want, but I guarantee you they'll still watch it. Same as Roy Jones and Tyson. Same, yeah, on the, watch it like, same yeah. as Roy Jones and Tyson on the weekend. Everyone they too old. This is piss take. You know it's this and that. And I was one of those people. I didn't slag them off as such. But I was like, oh, you know, you can just you can visibly see they're both past it, but. 
what happened? I, I put it on and watched it there. And it wasn't actually that bad, like. No, it wasn't. To watch, to be it fair. wasn't, and it and it was what I thought it was going to be. You know, they wasn't in there trying to kill each other. You could see that Tyson was ripping the body, but you could see when he was coming up to the head. You know, he wasn't trying to knock knock his block yeah. off. And do you know what? The way I look at it is, if it's gonna, if if it gives two fifty year old men a bit of motivation to to continue to live an healthy lifestyle and, and stay in the gym and get fit yeah. and healthy, then then good on them. And if they can make money from it in the process, then we're weak to say they're not they're not entitled to. You know, there's a want for it. People are buying it. They've both dedicated their life to the to the sport. I know Tyson's a bit of a lunatic in his day, but him and Roy Jones are you know someone of my age never got to watch Tyson and Roy Jones in their prime in a massive fight. You know, yeah. I've watched Roy Jones against guys against like Joe Calzaghe and Enzo Mack but he was obviously coming to the end of his career I, I can't ever remember what I can remember my dad watching Tyson and Lewis but I was too young to remember what happened whereas now at 25 yeah we're in a real fight but I've, I've watched Tyson and yeah, Jones yeah, share a ring so look they, they did it the right way I think they, they they you know they didn't try and kill each other they didn't go in and knock each other up they went in there and, and did an exhibition it was like a sparring match you know without, without yeah, the fun, fun guard. And well, like they made some money and and it, it helped get it, especially with Tyson. I think it helped get him out of a bit of a rut and get him fit and and training again. So it it, it was good. And if he, they do it again next year, I'll watch it again next year definitely, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's another one in there, and there people will watch. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah, the Logan Paul like. I can't believe I expect KSI is like pissed off because he <laughs> he won his fight against him as well, didn't he? And he's just like, ah, oh, get on the back burner, son. Well, Dana White said didn't he the other day he was like, in Logan Paul, he said the guy who got beat up by that. That video game guy from England, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, like, and he's fighting Floyd Mayweather. He's like, yeah, he's like, lad just sums, lad just sums boxing up at the minute, and then he it's says, so insane, isn't it? it's uh, yeah, I bet low, I bet uh, KSI's a little bit sour. He's missing out on a uh, on a couple it's of like, hundred mil. Beat him, like, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. But um, look, it is what it is, isn't it? It's, it'll be fun. When it'll I, be, I'll it'll watch it. I'll watch it because I'll watch it even if I watch it the. For, for a giggle, you know, I'll watch a press conference. That'll uh, yeah, be funny, I expect. Yeah, exactly. It's it's one like. Mayweather and McGregor was a bit of a spectacle. I know, don't get me wrong, McGregor is a trained martial artist, trained can box, can can ban. Yeah. So obviously there was a little bit of everyone who fought. He could, you know, he, he he's, on paper he could have won it, you know. Although the purists and people, you know, know their boxing, know he was never going to win it. But he did have that puncher's chance where it's like this Logan Paul. You just know. He's right? not going to yeah. land a glove, is he? No. He's not going to He's Only time he's going to land a punch is if Mayweather lets him land a punch. To make it look yeah, a bit to, better. Yeah, to make like... it look a bit better, which he may well do. Um, like I, I think when he fought McGregor, I think, you know, it's great that McGregor went 10 rounds, but when have we ever seen Mayweather walking forward and walking someone yeah, down? You'd never see fight, it. Is it. If Mayweather wanted to, to sit on the back on the back foot for, for 10 rounds yeah. and not have a glove landed on him, I think he could have. I think if he wanted to take him out in two or three rounds, I think he probably could have, but... You know, he's um, they did it to make money. That's what that, especially Mayweather. That's what he's all about, and he's, he's making money. Yeah, definitely, he, he spends it like he's going out of fashion. So I can imagine he, he does. You know, he's probably he's running. Probably, yeah. Perhaps he's running a little bit low, and he thinks I need I need to find a way to to get some cash coming back in. And uh, uh, obviously, fighting Logan Paul was the best logical option for yeah. him. <laughs> well, it makes sense, I suppose, because he just wants an easy payday. Yeah, look, he it doesn't is, have to train hard. He just it is stupid. It is stupid. I I completely agree. It's stupid, but he's. Was he maybe about 40, 40 years of age now, yeah. probably? Like you said, he hasn't got to train. He hasn't got to do anything. He hasn't got to diet or, or make weight. He's just going to turn up, probably out of shape, not train, and, and, and spank him for four rounds. Pull uh, 100 mil, like. Yeah, pulling an, an easy <laughs> 100 mil. His clothing will go through the roof because everyone will want to buy money team stuff yeah. because Mayweather's fighting again. Um, and he'll probably help his, his promotional side, yeah. help him promote his fighters again because he's, his name's back in the media. So, you, you know... It, it's not just a matter of he wants to fight Logan Paul for an easy fight. He wants to, he knows the the benefits that comes with yeah. it. And he's not going to be fighting. He's he's not looking to become a contender again. So I suppose from his perspective, yeah, like, he's what's he got he, to lose? He, isn't he? He's retired. He knows he's not coming back to fight for the belts. He's he got no intention of it. But like you said, if he can make a quick hundred mil by fighting why a not, YouTuber, yeah. why not? I mean, I'd do it if I if I, if I could. Someone come <laughs> to me now and said, "You want to fight KSI for?" For one mil, I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. So, you know, I wouldn't think twice about it. And, I'd probably, you, it? and I'd probably train and diet for it as well. Yeah, because yeah. Mayweather can just jump in and, and do it for a laugh. So yeah. I, you can't blame him. Call him out, mate. Call him out. Call. I, I think that's that's the next logical <laughs> move is, is call out KSI. Yeah, could happen like that. You never fucking know, would you? <laughs> you don't know. You literally don't <laughs> These know. These things happen like, don't they? At the minute, especially the... Nothing at the minute with this world, uh, nothing would surprise me, I yeah. don't think. Especially with, with, with the... With the 
society today and how, and how, and how we are, like you said, you, YouTubers being boxers and, you know, anything could happen. So ne- yeah. never say never. You never know. You may see me in KSI in the ring one day. Oh, I'd love to see it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see it. Right. Well, I don't know. You've got a gym to get to and open, mate. So Yes, uh, I have. I've got a back to the grind now. Yeah. We'll open the gym up and um, work the boys hard. So that, that that's what... That's what I'm doing when I when I'm not training. I'm uh, I'm beasting the kids at the gym. So uh, that, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm off to now. Happy days. No, thanks very much for coming in, mate. No uh, problem, mate. Do you want to give a shout out where you can find you? Yeah, and... you can catch me on um, Instagram and Twitter. It's Jack Show MMA, uh, Jack Tank Show on Facebook, um, and just a quick shout out to uh, all my my coaches and teammates at Show MMA. Um, Guy Lockett, him, uh, Greg Carlo, Carl Parker, Richard Shaw. And also to all my sponsors, I won't name them because I'll forget someone and someone will be upset. So if you go <laughs> on my, my socials, they're, they're all on there. And obviously to my, my girlfriend, my my family, my mother, my sister, all the boys, and uh, all my fans as well. Uh, 2020 ain't been the best, but uh, I'm sure 2021 will be uh, a, a better year for us all. And uh, thanks to you for having me on as uh, well. No problem, mate. It's my pleasure. And yeah, I hope 2021's a bang of you, mate. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Cheers, Jack. Nice one, buddy. <laughs> Experience Real Podcast.